What's up guys, Stevie the Military Biker, uh, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to learn how to change the oil, uh, the main engine oil and the primary oil uh, on the Sportster. Disclaimer, I am no way, shape or form a mechanic, a qualified journeyman or a qualified mechanic at all. I just have a bit of engine experience working on Challenger 2 tanks for 20 odd years. Uh, and let's be honest, it's pretty easy to do it yourself. Uh, so yeah, let's get straight into the video and I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do uh, on a Harley Davidson Sportster to change the oil and the primary. All right, so first things first, let's talk about what you're gonna to need to do the job. Uh, as you can see, I have my worldly goods in front of me, everything that we're gonna to need to do the task of changing the oil. Uh, so obviously you're gonna need some pans to cast the oil in. I've got two, one for the primary uh, and one for the main engine. A couple of filler, uh, a couple of fillers that you put your oil through to save it getting messy everywhere. Uh, I'll come back to the Pepsi bottles in a sec. Tools you're gonna need, you're gonna need a flathead screwdriver, uh, obviously a filter wrench uh, of some sort, that's my version. Uh, you're gonna need a quarter Allen socket, uh, either a 19 mil socket or a 19 mil uh, spanner or wrench as you guys call it in North America. And an adjust, and a, uh, a uh, oh, Jesus Christ, socket wrench. <laughs> well, some, uh, some, Planolette or whatever to clean up, up the mess, a pair of gloves or some set of gloves so it doesn't go on your hands, uh, and a socket set just in case you need any more tools. All right, what else are you gonna need? Obviously, clearly you are gonna need some oil to do the job. Um, I've got two types of oil here. I've got the synthetic and the normal bog standard oil. I am going with the synthetic this year. Uh, I did use that last year, but just to show you uh, what you can use, you can use the, the non-synthetic oil there or the actual uh, synthetic oil. I've gone for the Screaming Eagle Harley Davidson's own, but there are other products out there that you can use and obviously a, uh, a filter. Uh, what else we got here? So we've got the um, uh, the primary oil, all right, as you can see there it is. I bought the genuine Harley Davidson stuff. Why? Because I did. Uh, again, there are other products out there if you want to buy them. And obviously the primary case um, o-ring seal to go on the primary. Whenever you change, whenever you change over your oil, obviously you, you guys know that you change over your your, um, your seals as well. So that's what we've got. I said I'd cover why we've got the Pepsi bottles there. Well, when you put the oil in there, you've got really no place else to put it. So I normally just uh, put my oil that goes into the pan into a Pepsi bottle and dispose of it responsibly at the end of the job. What else you're going to need? Obviously a motorcycle lift and ratchet there for a ratchet strap thing to um, stop your bike from falling off the lift once she's, when she's on. So that's everything you will need to complete this job. So first thing you're going to do if you can is you're going to get on a bike and you're going to take it around the block for at least 20 minutes so it warm the engine up. Uh, warm the oil up, warm the gearbox up to get it to optimum working temperature. All right, but unfortunately, if you can't do that, like me, uh, outside of the snow and ice and whatever you, if you live in the, the northern hemisphere like I do, you won't be able to um, ride your bike around while it's snowing and obviously icy. So, best thing I can do right now is, uh, you know, I don't want to wait till riding season to be changing me. Also, I want to do it now. It's going to be in about a month's time. Hopefully, the snow and wind and everything will be gone. Um, so I'm just going to fire up the engine, leave it running for about 10, 15, 20 minutes or so, let it do its thing, get warm. Uh, and the reason why we do that is because oil is obviously a hell of a lot more easier to get out of your engine when it's warm. It flows a hell of a lot more. So let's crack on with doing that. Ooh. Twenty minutes later. All right, now she's sufficiently warmed up. Uh, the oil underneath or in within the engine is now dropping all the way down to the bottom of the engine. Will come out no problem. All right, so now you've got your, uh, your jack underneath exactly where you want it. Uh, bearing in mind you don't want to block the, the actual. Uh, drain plug and everything else, so make sure you got it where it is. Uh, and 
and get it up, get it level, get it up, chee -chee. <laughs> get it level, uh, and then tie it off with the, uh, the ratchet strap. That's what you want to see better now. So, as you can see underneath there now, there's the pipe uh, from your main engine, all right, and there's the Jubilee clip right there. And all you do is unscrew that, pull the pipe off the subframe, uh, and then drop your oil into there. And it should come out nice now because it's nice and warm. So, if I uh, do this, add a bit of light so you can see what the hell you're doing. Obviously, if you've got gloves, put them on. I've got gloves, but I can't be asked. Just crack it off, and as you will see, there comes the oil. Out she comes. Six months later. Oh, all right. As you can see, she's uh, she's completely more or less drained. Now, paper. She's more or less done. Just give a little bit of a. Rub off at the end. Fire it back on as best you can. Onto the subframe. All the way up. You see there, and then snug your Jubilee clip exactly where it was before. Uh, and we're going to do this. Just move the torch out the way slightly. And then just turn it back up. Trying to do this so you guys can see. Don't go too mad though, because you will snap. Jubilee clip. Just it doesn't want to be over tight, it just wants to be nice and snug so that's not coming off like so. Easy peasy. Right, filter. Okay, so you've got your new filter there, your new Harley Davidson, or whatever brand you want to use. What you want to be doing with the filter now, obviously, I've got the chrome one, um, so probably a good idea to wear gloves or just clean it off after you've finished um, is you want to prime the, the seal layer itself and just put a little bit of oil in there so you, the, the filter isn't you know bang on dry completely dry when you're trying to fire the bike up so the, the, the oil that you're going to use just literally don't use your uh, don't use that Ugh. take it off do your thing open up your oil just whoop, spill it everywhere. <laughs> That's why you've got one of these, Stevie boy. Put that in there. Then just a, that's it. That's all you need. Just a little pishy bit of oil, obviously. Tiny, tiny bit, and obviously make sure you tidy up your mess afterwards because the messes will go mental, and we don't want that. Capture your oil there. So, woo, a little bit of spillage going down the side onto the toolbox. That's all good, because I'll use that in a sec. All right, that's gone in. You've got your little bit of oil in there now, which is happy there. And then just with this, just sprinkle a little bit on there, like so. Put that in a safe place, somewhere where you're not going to get oil everywhere. And then just put the oil on the seal to help seal it when you actually tighten it up onto the bike. Easy peasy. All right, so now that you've primed your filter, uh, and obviously you put your, your oil on the seal and whatever, there's no need to put some on the side of the actual mount itself, because you've already done that with the seal. Just go ahead, quick as you can, fire it on, and make sure you tighten it up quickly so no oil spills out, and then it's literally just hand tight with it, so you don't need to go mental with a ratchet or anything like that. Just tighten it up until she doesn't go anymore with the strength of your hands. So, and if you need to clean it off, obviously, because there will be some res residual oil on there, then do so. Try not to, obviously, if you've got a chrome one, use one of these so you don't scratch it like that. Now, there's the sticker that comes with this. Obviously, I normally put that onto my service board that I've got in the garage with the date that I did the, uh, the change the oil, change the filter, and whatever, just so I know when I did it. So, I don't leave it on the side. What I will do is I'll stick that on the bike seat for now. Make sure I've got oil. And then when you've got it, just give it a nice quick nip up like so. Tidy all around the filter so it looks nice and chromey again. Like that. And then, yeah, she's on. She's going nowhere. Now it's nice and dry. There you go. 
If you do have a little sort of leather uh, filter that you want to use, filter wrench that you want to use, then just nip it up with that. But I'm more than happy using my massive guns to square it away. <laughs> anyway, that's it, that's it on. All right, so uh, that's the filter on. What you want to be doing now is putting uh, three litres of your oil in there, all right, three quarts. Now, if you're like me, you don't have, uh, and you've got that big jug of synthetic and you don't have the actual one litre thingies, um, the one litre jugs, I've got the four litre jug, all right? And it tells you on the side, obviously, uh, you know, one, two, three, and up here there's be four. So there's four litres in that, okay? So I've got this jug here, which tells me exactly one litre, uh, half a litre, one litre, one and a half litres and two litres. So I'm gonna pour that into that and then into the engine so I know exactly how much I'm putting in. Like so. I'm actually gonna go up to all the way to two litres. So I know at least there's two litres in the bike. Now the bike takes three and a half litres, uh, three, uh, three and a half quarts, but you only wanna put three in for now. Right, so obviously just because I've got a massive full jug and I don't know if that actually fits straight into there, I'm gonna use this just for now, just to get a bit, uh, a bit of oil in. Ooh, stay there, bike. So I'll get a bit of oil in, it'll obviously cause an absolute mess. Because again, messes will go for red. You don't want that, do we, boys and girls? So she's in all the way. That's two litres in the bike. Buy that in there. So it'll go everywhere. Have a little tidy up. On the whole, now we know we've got to put another litre in. Ooh, bit more. Gosh. That's one litre. You should start seeing it at the top there, which I am. Pull that out, put that back into its little drip tray so it doesn't go everywhere. Keys out. All right, cool. So let's let's. Uh, what we want to do is we want to check on a dipstick if the levels uh, between those two little two little inscribes going round, one for obviously low, one for uh, high, uh, or one for max, low and max basically. So we're going to check that in the dipstick in there and see where we're at. All right, let's do it. Again, rag underneath just in case if any excess oil comes out. You don't want it on your Vance and Hines short shots. That is for sure. Look at that. Give it a rub off. Get rid of all the oil. Stick it in. Pull it out. I don't know if you guys can see that. But that, come on, is bang on. I you can't see it coming in for focus and stuff, but anyway. Come on, focus. Anyway, yeah, trust me when I say it. It is literally bang on, just below the line, which is exactly where you want it, really. Um, if obviously at this point, you know, it was running low, there you go, you can see the two lines on there now. So obviously you, uh, you're low and you're high. It's gotta be in between that. Now if you obviously, when you, you've topped up the bike and whatever, you've run it for a minute, uh, and you find that it's slightly lower than what it should be, just top it up as you would do uh, on a normal on a car or anything like that. Top it up until you get to your desired location of where you want it is just underneath uh, the high mark on the plug. So that's how you change your oil on a 99 Harley Davidson Evolution Sport. Okay, so now the engine's had its new lube in it. I'm gonna put some, uh, change the oil in the primary, obviously to drop the oil uh, and re-put some more oil in 
excuse me, so you've got some nice fancy oil to look after your transmission. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna remove the, the filler cap, all right? You've got your, your quarter uh, Allen socket, wrench, key, whatever you wanna use. Um, and again, as always, lefty loosey, righty tighty. Now you'll notice on these, uh, there is a little washer. Oh, you don't want to lose that. You do not want to lose that. It's actually a uh, rubber seal, a rubber holding seal. So you don't, certainly don't want to lose it. I've just placed that down in a safe place, and the same with the second one. Here. Okay, I took the filler cap off. Inside there, there is a new, there is a seal. Now I did change this. I changed the seal uh, not so long ago, actually. So I'm not going to change it again. Um, it's a bit of a bad idea to keep changing seals within such a short space of time. Now I'm going to check my primary chain. Um, there isn't much movement at all in that, so I do not need to adjust it. I think the adjustment is if you can lift that up, down, up and down your chain inside there. I'll show you. If you can lift your chain up, which is inside here, uh, at least a quarter of an inch, a quarter to a half inch, then it needs to be adjusted. But uh, that is pretty tight, so that's pretty good, to be honest, so I don't need to mess around with that. Cool, so that's off. Next thing I'm gonna take off uh, is actually the clutch cover on here, so I can actually change the seal. That's on the, the O-ring seal, that's on the inside of that. Uh, but first, before we do any of that, we're gonna drop, drop the primary oil. All right, so, uh, as I was talking about before, move them out of the way. as I was talking about before, where you want to see the uh, the cap, where you want to remove, which is here, this one here, all right, like the front one is the adjuster, so this is the one at the back that you want to actually take off. Now, you want to do it when the, oh, there's an oil pan underneath, clearly, and that is a 19 millimeter, 19 mil on my bike, it might be different on your guys' bike, so again, Lefty Lucy, it shouldn't be that tight anyway because it's aluminium and clearly you don't want to do it too tight because then we're on about uh, stripping threads and stuff, which is never a good thing. If you got one of these type of spanners or wrenches, um, it helps really. And then as soon as you got it off, you do it undo it finger. As soon as she's the finger loose, then start loosening. Now this Top of this is magnetic, so you can see if there's any crap, any filings, or your engine. Oh shit! And what, whatever you do, don't drop it into your oil pan like I just did. <laughs> there we go. So you can see the plug. It's got some bits of filings at the bottom, not a great deal, which is good. Uh, not a hell of a lot at all, actually. Bearing in mind it just fell in the oil. However, you can see it there. It's magnetic, so it's not going to come off with oil. Um, but that's that's in good nick, actually. That's really good nick, and the seal that comes with your oil filter. The O-ring seal that we showed uh, at the beginning of the, uh, the vlog, that's the one that you want to change out there. So the one that comes attached to your, the box of your oil filter, that's the one right there. So we'll let that drain as it is. Uh, I'll clean this plug up and then we'll do the oil change. Okay, so she has uh, more or less finished uh, draining now. So you're going to need uh, obviously a, uh, where was it? A, a five thirty twos uh, quarter. Sorry, hang on. What does it say? Yeah, five thirty two uh, Allen socket for the actual filler plug, and you're gonna need a three sixteenths uh, Allen key, Allen key, Allen head, whatever you want to use it uh, for these four bolts here to get actually into the thing there, into the uh, clutch to change out the O ring seal because that's exactly what you want to do. Alright, so you obviously want to put your new O-ring seal on before you lose it. Put it on your filler plug, uh, sorry, your uh, drain plug. Oh, they are finicky with these gloves on. Let me take these frigging gloves off. Right now, 
what we'll do is we'll try and be surgical because the surgeons are going to wear these. Let's get that one go, jobs again. So all the way down, roll it all the way down, all the way to the bottom, and you've got your uh, drain plug with the new seal on, which we'll put on shortly. Anyway, what we want to take off is these, is these little bolts to get into the clutch to remove uh, and replace the clutch seal. So just undo them. Don't go. Make sure these bolts are quite delicate, so be careful when you when you're moving them and, and you know ratcheting them off. Be careful. You certainly do not want to break them. Oh, that's in the way, man. Okay, so I need I need an Allen key for this one, an actual Allen key, not a socket. But what I will do is take these out. Now again, be careful because these come with washers on. Okay, so put them in a safe place out the way where you're not going to lose the washers. Right, there will be one. I'll go get a bloody Allen key. Right, so... Break them off and then you just want to hold that on as best you can. Realistically, probably easier to uh, <laughs> take this one off first so you've got a nut in that end. Or a bolt, sorry. You've got a bolt in that end to stop it from dropping off. Like I said, I'm not a qualified mechanic. I just don't like paying all that money. There you go, so she's out. Okay now, anything, you want to be super careful, all right, when you're taking this off, not to hit this, or not to lose your spring, all right, because if that falls off, then you need to, that's your way you adjust your clutch, and stuff like that, all right, so be very careful when you're taking this off, as you can see, there's the seal, so just whiz the seal off, uh, where's my screwdriver, where's that gone, anyway, take the seal off, like so, be careful not to, as you can see there, look, slightly damaged. So it's been tightened, uh, or come loose as I've been tightened there. So take that off. And again, you want to prime this seal just around the edges, both edges really, so it gives it a really, really good seal. Um, you can use uh, your oil that you've got. I need this stuff to do it, which I will do right now. go mad. You don't have to go you know, absolutely berserk, just a light smear of oil on it. Just if you can, just run it through your fingers like that. Go on. Now this, from what I can remember last time I did it, was a pain in the ass. Excuse my friends, because there is actually a little groove where it sits in and it's a pain in the bum to keep it. <laughs> As you can see, Jesus. Started already. Boys and girls. Yes. Yeah. So she's in nicely. She's brilliant. Good news. Now I'm gonna take these gloves off because I've got oil on them. However, this is a finickety bit. This is an absolute is that recording? Yeah it is. So as you can see on the plate there. That's where that spring sits, okay? That spring has to sit in there, otherwise it'll pop off, which is never a good thing, okay? So, what you wanna do is obviously just clean that off, and then, if you can, be very careful when putting this on. Make sure you get your spring bang in the middle. Like that. Get your bolts in, get one in, get the top one in, if you can, just nip them up with the Allen key, or if you guys call them over here in America and States and Canada, and then get that one in, like 
So at this point as well, obviously you'd, you'd adjust your clutch with that off, your clutch cover off. You'd adjust your clutch, but I don't need to because mine's fine. Uh, and there we go, we've got it on. So that, Jesus, was, was extremely easy compared to what it did to me last time. I lost a plot with it last time and it was just an absolute nightmare. <laughs> it really was a nightmare for me last time. But that went back on surprisingly easy. Now, you've seen the damage to the last seal that was on there, all right? So you don't want to go mental and you don't want to tighten them up. Like, you know, I'll just do that all the way in a clockwise fashion. Go around, you know, do one, do the top one, then do the bottom one, top one, bottom one, till it's till you're happy, and then do the sides as well. So you don't, again, you don't need to go mentally tight with these because it's aluminium going into aluminium. So just be careful. Or aluminium, as you guys say in North America. Okay, so that is good. Now you will get a slight bit of seepage coming out of here when you filled it up and you've started and you've been riding the bike for a while. Just a very ever so slight while the seal beds in, all right? But it will go away. If it doesn't go away, you know you've done it wrong. I'm sure there's torque settings for them, but I don't know, he's probably looking up. Here we go, job done. All right, that's your seal changed, your O-ring seal changed. All right, man, so if like me, you've only got a few funnels and you've used it for your engine oil, Clean it off, or you don't want to contaminate the inside of the uh, of the primary. Okay, so clean it off. I have done. That is nice and clean. Now we're going to fill it up uh, with one quart of this. All right, primary uh, primary chain case lubricant. It's called transmission and primary chain case lubricant. Okay, one quart or one litre straight in through the filler hole, like so. Now when you're doing this, keep an eye out. You do not want this to start pouring out the side and down there. Okay, so that means you put too much in so just take your time nice and slowly okay just put some in let it seep through like that okay, this is quite thick so it will take you you know a bit of time to fill up now when you're filling this up it should take it to like extremely close to coming out so you've got to be careful definitely got to be careful with the uh, filling this up okay and again just while you're doing this watch for leaks coming out the bottom of your transmission uh, housing. Like I said before, uh, obviously that's now full with a uh, one litre of uh, of the oil, primary oil, and it's at this point if you're like I said before, if your uh, your primary chain was loose or you know too much wiggle in it, then you'd obviously adjust it from underneath the ideal time while it's off. So yeah, okay, that's the primary done. Let's put everything back together. Now this, the cover, uh, the primary fill cover will only go back on one way. Well, it'll go back on two ways, but there's only one correct way, right? With the thickest part at the bottom. All right, as we say in the UK, jobs are good. Uh, now I would, uh, if I were you, and I will do in a bit, I'm not gonna do it now because uh, it's a bit late, but I'll do it uh, tomorrow morning. First thing, I will run the bike up uh, for about, I don't know, maybe 10 minutes. Check for leaks, uh, check for leaks on the filter, check for leaks on the, uh, the underneath of the transmission there, and obviously here as well. And just basically checking it for uh, if you've done it wrong or you know if there's any leak coming out of anywhere, and obviously residue from any excess oil that has been spilt will be burning away at that point once the engine's hot. Um, so you will see maybe some little bits of smoke, so try and clear up as much as you can after yourself. But yeah, that is uh, the primary oil changed on the 99 Sports there. So thanks for watching guys, hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, simple, easy task that you can do at home yourself without paying a dealership, an absolute wedge to do. Uh, you know, that took me what, half an hour, half an hour-ish to do, to do both uh, the primary and the main engine oil. All right, just remember to do it properly. Uh, don't cut corners and stuff like that. You know, like I say, I'm not no expert, but you know, uh, yeah, it's pretty simple, let's be honest. Let's be honest, it's just oil. Oil and seals, that's it. But do it right or do it twice.
All right, well, anyway, that's it. Uh, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. Um, and if you are new to the channel, uh, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe. Helps the channel get uh, grow and get out there for everybody else to see. So safe riding wherever you are. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and yeah, if you like me and you've got a sports there, keep it riding, man. Keep it riding. And remember, you'll never walk alone.